Hi, this is Whiskey Bravo 2, Charlie Bravo Alpha, Barb. Uh, this is the the XFT8, uh, and I wanted to make a short video about the control elements of the XFT8 and how to use it to be a guide. So, on the XFT8, we have a couple of controls. Uh, the one here is, oh, by the way, this is the BMS version, which is the battery management system version, which has the internal battery in it. Let me show it so you can see the slim battery just underneath. Uh, for the battery management system, we have actually, let me talk about the controls first and I'll show that. So this is the power on off switch here. It's a slight switch to turn the battery power on and off. So here we have the uh, RF power switch between low and high. So to give an example of low and high, let's say in 10 meter, if we have in high 500 milliwatts, when we pull it to low, it's 250 milliwatts. It helps the power. Here you can see uh, at the bottom board, there's a USB B mini, sorry, USB mini connector. So this is the power, five volt power in from any USB power source. It can be a battery bank or it will be a USB adapter, wall wart. So what this does is uh, it powers the rig at the same time, charges the battery. So we have a similar one here which is a 12 volt barrel connector here on the side. And this does the same thing. Actually, we can charge and we can at the same time power the rig. Here, uh, another USB-B mini, and this is used only for updating the firmware. The other sockets, we are not using them. At the back, we have an SD card here the SD card records all the QSOs automatically or depending on you, you can select from the menu not to re record automatically, then it won't record it. Let's power up the, the XFT8. When we power up the, the XFT8, this is the splash screen that we get. These are our touch controls. Here we have the uh, waterfall. Here you have your center frequency that can move between 500 hertz and 3000 hertz. These are the controls that we have. We are going to talk about that. And that's it. And on the side here, you have LEDs. Actually, there are four LEDs. This shows the battery level. So my battery is health, which is 50% now because I used this rig this morning to perform a couple of QSOs. Now, when we power on, what we should do? First, we sync. Sync means for syncing, you can see the band is kind of receiving weak because 10 meter is not that good. So I increase the gain. This is the gain. So I increase it to 28, let's say. This can be up to 32. Now you can see the signals are coming much better. Now we press sync and we wait. At sync, this syncs the timing. There you go, it's synced. So this line goes at the bottom of one of the signals, then the rig is synced and we will start receiving. There you go. These are the, this is the receive monitor part, which is similar to WSJTX's monitor screen, which is divided into two parts. And this is our QSO calls and replies part. Now, the rig, this rig has two modes, one QSO mode. Now it's in the QSO mode. In the QSO mode, if you leave it like that, the rig does nothing. You have to choose one of the CQ calling stations to start. Let's see this one. I press on it, it comes here. Now, this is our station which we are going to call. Let's wait if it's going to start calling. There you go. 
If it's red, it's in the queue for the next session, I mean, next cycle to TX. So this is RX. When it's going to TX, it will be TX. There you go. It's yellow. And now we are transmitting and you can see our signal in the center of the line. Now, this fixed and received means if you press fixed, whatever you have here, our transmit and receive will stay in that frequency. If we choose received, the received signal will be aligned with the station's received signal automatically. So it will go to the station's receive signal or transmitting signal, whatever, transmitting frequency, whatever is that. Uh, let's try that again. Let me see if any station will be calling CQ. Okay, this guy. Let's try this guy. No, this one. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. By the way, you can, you don't have to. Let's see. So he's transmitting in that location, which is 500, 5,525 uh, 5, hertz. And our TX is exactly in the same spot as the CQ station. So it matches that when it's received. When it's fixed, it doesn't. It just stays wherever you choose it. So this is received. So what is clear? So when you come to clear, when you press clear, it clears this, not the monitoring, but the transmitting CQ window. And this was the QSO mode where we were selecting stations, right? Now we go into beacon mode. Beacon mode means, as the name depicts, beacon. So the rig calls CQ. If anyone responds to that CQ, it automatically starts the CQ I mean, QSO with that guy who's calling us. And if it's a kind of satisfactory and successful QSO, it records it automatically. If not, it just leaves it go and then starts calling CQ again. In this mode, you don't have to attend. You can leave the rig, do its own thing. So that's beacon. Let's see. You see? Now this is the CQ line. We are going to call CQ. In the next sequence, we are going to do that. Oh, actually, we are calling it. Now it finished. Yeah. So this is the beacon mode. Okay, let's turn off beacon. So this is tune. Tune is same mentality as WSJTX, but has more than that. So when you press tune, actually this is a configuration screen. What you do is you can set your time, you can set your date. So how to set time and date. And this rig has a real time clock with a button cell battery, so it keeps track of the clock even if you power off the rig so you advance the hours with hour minus hour plus min minutes by minutes plus minute minus and seconds at second and then when you want to record what you did you press set the same goes for the day month year you adjust those so here you can change bands uh, let me give it an example I changed to 12 meter, but as you can see on top, it's still 10 meters. So you have to save it. When you save it, that's 12 meter band. And then the bands go like that. It's 
17, 20 meters, 10 meters, seven meters. Let's say we, are, we wanna operate on seven meters. We press save and it saves it. So I'll go back to my, my antenna in car is 10 meters. So I go back to 10 meters. So when you wanna tune, you don't wanna transmit a QSO or anything like that. You wanna just transmit and activate the tuner, right? So you press XMET when, which means transmit. And you can see that rig starts to transmit. When you wanna stop, you wanna stop. So logging, logging as I mentioned is done by the SD card. So if you wanna automatically log, you start log on. So logging is on. And if you don't wanna log automatically, it's logging off. So it won't log whatever communication you are doing. Uh, we also have special call sign or activation additions. Like if you are CQ, it just calls CQ. If you add soda, it adds CQ soda call sign. If you wanna do poda, you just press on poda and then it does poda. Let's, uh, and if you wanna do QRP, add QRP, you can do that too, add QRP. And it adds CQ QRP call sign. There is also free one and free two, which you can use anything in it, unless it's 13 characters. It can be like CQDX, CQEU or whatever. But to activate those, you have to go with a editor and record it in your SD card configuration, which is explained in detail in the manual and in the GitHub site. Uh, what else? Uh, that's it, yeah. And here, again, it's the, you know, changing the center frequency left and right, F plus and F minus. So this is the tune screen. Rx is not a button, it's just an indicator. When the rig receives its Rx, when the rig transmits, it becomes red, TX. And this is the, also an indicator, shows you the mode. Let's say, if we go to tune and choose soda, when we come back, it becomes soda. So it means that now, if we transmit, it will be CQ soda, whatever. Let's try it in beacon mode. Let's see what we, you see? CQ, soda, WB2CBA, and my maiden grid. So let me end this. Uh, sync is sync, as we said, or oh, received fix. So this is, as I explained before, received means that when you are transmitting, it moves the frequency, which is this, to the received transceivers or stations transmitting frequency. So uh, what else? And if it's fixed, then it doesn't move it. Whatever you choose here, it stays there exactly. I operate generally on received, so it will be the calling stations frequency. Sync, as I said at the beginning, sync, you have to sync the ring, rig when you start the rig for the first time. Gain is receive gain. If you see that you are not seeing many stations, you can play with gain, increase it to receive weak stations also. But in some cases, if the bands are good, the stations are coming too strong and you feel that they are bloating you, then you can degrease it with the G minus. So basically that's it, that's it. I mean, uh, this is a short video showing how to use all the controls on DXFT8. Uh, DXFT8 is a 
pretty portable rig and with the battery it becomes more portable so there's one thing though when you turn off the xft8 you can see the leds are still on so what's going on here that's normal the bms gives up after 30 seconds why i have no clue it's the functionality of this bms chip i choose for it but after 30 seconds you'll see that it's going to turn off actually it's not powering the rig it's just the leds showing you that's you know how much battery is left there you go it turned off so everything is off now so this is this is perfectly normal so yeah thank you this is whiskey bravo 2 charlie bravo alpha i did a short and quick and dirty video of dx ft8 functionality thank you